lovely people. My name is Alethea Thomas. Welcome to the channel. If you're into books and bookish things, then you're in the right place. So today, I am not feeling that well. I'm, I got this whole allergy thing going on because we have had a very mild winter here in the Midwest. And because of the mild winter, there wasn't a really hard freeze. And the pollen is going crazy. All of the trees have exploded, and <laughs> there are huge pollen granules everywhere, and I have really bad hay fever because of it. Like, yesterday, and then the day before, when I was actually planning on filming, I felt good. Like, in the early afternoon, I was fine. And then as the day kind of wore on, I felt worse and worse and worse, and I just couldn't stop coughing, I couldn't stop sneezing, and then it just kind of got worse from there. But I'm a little bit better now, and I've kind of been taking it easy. And so I decided, okay, let's go ahead and get the video filmed and uh, get it out while I've got a little bit of extra time here. So I am going to talk about the books that I plan to read in April, and just kind of my general plans for that. And then I wanted to kind of share with you a little adventure I went on and ended up purchasing a number of books on said adventure because um, it was a, it was just a really weird kind of experience. But I will get into that in uh, a little bit here. So let's uh, let's first start with the books that I actually plan to read in April. Let me move the camera just a smidge here. You get a little bit better view. There we go. I think that's just a bit better. Okay. So I have a massive TBR right now, but I can't get to it all. It's just not feasible right now. And that's perfectly fine. I'm actually really glad to have too many books on the TBR to read currently. And I'm just going to have to push some more books um, off a little bit and probably just get to them a little bit later in the year. I have not really completed the last couple of months for the year on my planning session. I'll probably get to that um, here in the next couple of months once I see sort of what spring and summer are looking like for me. And um, I'll probably just end up moving some books and maybe incorporating some more shorts shorter novels and shorter stories into my reading <clears throat> pardon me so that I can kind of keep up with my goal of a hundred books for this year so just kind of keep that in mind so what this has made me forced me to do is just sort of tighten up what I'm actually going to read this month which is totally fine I have tests coming up and so I've got to concentrate on getting that material read and then once those tests are over I'm free I'm free bird and I can read whatever I want, whenever I want, and I'm just going to buckle down and get to it right when that happens. So the, um, the books that I have decided to concentrate on are going to be the following books. And I really, really want to get way farther in War and Peace than I am. I am currently 400, about 450 pages in. And... I need to really buckle down and get through this a little bit more quickly. It's very good. I just haven't found a whole lot of time to really just concentrate on it. So I think that as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to go ahead and buckle down and concentrate on it. And then I'm also kind of reading this as well, uh, Russia Against Napoleon, which is the, the true campaign um, of... Russia, and, I'm sorry, of Napoleon trying to conquer Russia um, and the battles there, which has been a very interesting book um, so far to kind of companion read with this. It gives a lot of context. Excuse me, I've noticed that Tolstoy doesn't really get into the details of the battle very much, and he fictionalizes some of it, which is to be expected, I think. But I do think that partner reading these things together is a very interesting experience. So I do recommend it. Um, so that's kind of one of the big things I'm concentrating on. And I'll probably get to that by the end of the month for sure. 
what I'm reading right now, and it's really good, and I didn't expect a nonfiction book to be this good. So this is Tulipomania, and it's by Mike Dash, and it's the true story of the world's most coveted flower and the extraordinary passions it aroused. And it is a really interesting nonfiction book about flowers, about the tulip industry in the very, very early times. So we kind of start out in, I think it was 1500, that the first, uh, let's see here, that the, the very first tulip was actually recorded. And this was, I get 1598 is one of the dates I'm seeing. 1500s into 1600s. And most, um, most botany, it, botany wasn't even a science at that point. Um, and it was really more about flowers and herbs and plants and their medicinal uses. So really it was a study of medicine that kind of started off um, floral interests, horticulturalists. They didn't exist. Was, so the point is they didn't exist until um, well into, I think, 1700 or so. Um, and tulips were recorded in, some, I think it was the Mediterranean areas, right? It's like Saudi Arabia. So the, the tulip itself did not originate in the Netherlands. The tulip was actually a child of Central Asia. A child of the unimaginable vastness of Central Asia. So far as anyone can tell, it did not reach the United Provinces, which is like the Netherlands, until 1570, and by then it had already been journeying for many hundreds of years from its original homeland in the mountain ranges that run north of the Himalayas along the 14th parallel. So they weren't really recorded in the Netherlands until the 1500s or so, and in, into Europe. And before then, they probably weren't really recorded at all. But the Turks were the first ones to actually start, you know, taking the flower out of the wild and planting it in their gardens. And the princes of Persia were really known for growing them. And so the visitors from, you know, Europe to Persia, they would see these gardens and they would see the tulips. And so they were very interested in the Persians would give tulips as gifts to people. And so then, you know, those European visitors would then take the tulips back into Europe. They're a very hardy flower. They uh, come from, you know, those mountain ranges. So it takes a lot of, uh, it, it, you have, it has to be a really hardy flower in order to survive those, that kind of climate. So it's a very interesting history of the tulip itself. And then he goes on into the adornment where it was used in Europe, the French liked to adorn their dresses with them, um, the flower itself becoming a very expensive commodity in Europe, and then the factors that made the different colorings of these tulips. And it was actually a disease that, you know, made the flames in in the tulips themselves. It was a, a virus. And so the, the flowers themselves were coveted for these different signature flamings of the color. And um, they couldn't really figure out how this flaming was, was occurring because it would happen randomly or seemingly randomly. And um, there, there just wasn't an explanation for it back in that time. We know now that it was a virus. Um, I think that that was discovered actually sometime in the 1900s, not too long ago, um, that that was, that was discovered. There's actually some really interesting, really interesting quotes about tulips here as well in this book. Um, so this one, for instance, the tulip was supreme among flowers in the same way that humans were lords of the animals Diamonds eclipsed all other precious stones, and the sun ruled the stars. That judgment to a 17th century mind said something important about the tulip. If humans were God's chosen creatures, then the tulip was surely God's chosen flower. Let's see if I can find another one real quick. I mean, I haven't, I've, I've gone through and kind of underlined 
a few things here and there, but I need to go back in and actually tab the book because I'm out of tabs right now. Voltaire had a quote, famous phrase, that the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, was neither holy nor Roman nor an empire. Um, because the Holy Roman Empire kind of got involved in growing the tulips as well for a little bit. Um, there are references to Leonardo da Vinci um, having tulips in his paintings, the Virgin Mary holding a tulip with the child Jesus. There was one I really liked, and it was kind of near the beginning. Let me see if I can find it. Tulips, um, they represented life and fertility. They were the heralds of spring. The simple beauty of these unsophisticated wildflowers, with their petals colored yellow or orange or cinnabar, must have been considerably enhanced by the bleak surroundings in which they were usually encountered. Um, so that's kind of, you know, in, in those Asiatic areas, those mountainous areas, that, um, that was just a, a bleak area for these flowers to grow. The flowers were not conquerors, but seducers. Flowers which wormed their way into a man's soul. So it's just really interesting stuff about flowers and tulips. And I've always liked tulips. I think I like roses much more than tulips, but that's the personal opinion. That's the English in me, I think. But, uh, but tulipomania, very interesting. Um, he does go on into the Dutch trade after kind of the history of uh, the propagation of tulips and then um, the eventual bust of tulipomania because they were selling tulips for hundreds of thousands of, I think they were fl francs or flanders or something like that, whatever the currency was at the time for them. And uh, kind of the eventual ruin that happened to some of the wealthiest families in the Netherlands uh, because of the tulip trade. So. That is Tulipomania, and then to accompany that I have Tulip Fever, a novel, and um, it's by Deborah Mogok, I think that's how you spell Mogok, and I remember watching the movie um, maybe a year or two ago, maybe a bit longer ago, and it was a really good movie, and I enjoyed it very much. Um, other movies that I've liked and novels that I've liked that have occurred in the Netherlands was Girl with a Pearl Earring, that's just such a good book and I thought I would really really love to read that so as soon as I finish up Tulipomania which shouldn't take me much longer I'm, I'm almost halfway through it I'm gonna get started right on Tulip Fever and Tulip Fever should be really quick for me because I know most of the story already and more than likely I'll just kind of skim it but um, but I, I just I just have a feeling I will quick read uh, I will quick read Tulip Fever, and I cannot wait. I'm, so, I, I'm actually so ready. I might start it a little early. I don't know. But anyway, those are um, the actual decisions that I have made for this month. I will go ahead and just read these four and then uh, continue studying my material that I have to study for. And my test is uh, the first week of May anyway. So that's coming up. It's coming up. It'll be here before I know it, and hopefully I will do just fine. Um, so then on to my adventure. <laughs> so we had a, um, a happy hour at work. I work with, uh, with litigators. I work with uh, record people, and it's, it's a very interesting time. They're very interesting people, and they love to have a happy hour on occasion. So we went, and we had a happy hour. And I had two glasses, two five ounce glasses of Chardonnay, nothing crazy. And we end happy hour, we all say goodbye. Um, and what I decide is I get up and I start walking out. I'm like, oh, you know, it probably wouldn't be very responsible of me to go ahead and get in my car and drive home right now because I'm not drunk, but I am definitely feeling it. So I think I'll walk around a little bit until. I, uh, I I feel sober enough to really drive. And there was a half price books across the street from the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings we were at. So I went to Buffalo, <laughs> I went from Buffalo Wild Wings over to half price books. And I was like, I'll just wander around in there for a while. And boy, was, uh, was wandering around half price books 
not drunk, but you know, tipsy, wasn't a good idea. <laughs> I ended up buying so much books. I guess we'll just start at the top. They had this Penguin Classics edition of Persuasion. And look at the price on that. It's practically perfect. There's only a couple things like here and there. But, you know, $3.49 for that. I don't know if it's picking up very well on there. Uh, yeah. Ooh, uh, no, no, yes, no. $3.49 for that. You can't beat it. So I was like, okay, yes. We'll definitely pick up Persuasion. It can go in my Black Books collection. Then I got Little Women by Lumise Bay Alcott in this nice Chiltern edition that is perfect. They're usually about $25 to $30 online, and I couldn't pass this up for $17. Um, oh, I'm sorry, $18, $17.99. And, oh, uh, hear that? Oh, it sounds good. New book smells good, too. And it's got, it's just lovely. I like the print. It's not too small. It's not too big. It's a nice handheld book. And if nothing else, I'll probably keep these chill turns for trophy books. But I did really want um, a nice edition of Little Women to add to my collection. And this one, I think, is just Little Women. I don't think it includes Good Wives. Yes, so this is just Little Women. It is not Good Wives. So um, that's just the first half of the U.S. version, which usually includes both. So I will probably have to go ahead and pick up Good Wives um, just to go along with this. If Chiltern even makes an edition of Good Wives, I don't know yet. Uh, the next book, I went ahead and got The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. And I've heard of The Moonstone often actually um, especially on books and things and that channel she's so cool I really love I, I like I can hear her talking in my head already but I could listen to her speak all day long um, and she's also put out a a book recently and I just absolutely adore her um, but she has referred to the moonstone quite often and so I wanted to see what it's all about and I've never read that I have never read a Wilkie Collins, so I'm, I am interested in this English author. So I thought that was a really good deal. It was five bucks. Let's see, what else did I get here? So I got uh, Daphne du Maurier's um, Rebecca, and I just thought when I saw this book that it was the neatest thing. I don't really pick up classics in hardbound too often right now, and I just... When I saw the color of this book and I saw the binding, I was like, you're coming home with me. You can't stay here in this half-price bookstore. And it smells like old book. Oh my goodness, it smells like old book. And I've been really interested in reading Rebecca. Copyright 1938, so it's a fairly modern book, I guess. I don't know anything about it, but... I've seen it on so many lists, and I hope it blows me away. I really do. Um, yeah, I'm, I am excited for Rebecca. Then I got In the Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco, and it was only $8. And it's an interesting type of um, binding, I guess. It's, it is a paperback, but it has these foldovers which are interesting, and the, ah, no, the, uh, the binding just kind of popped a little bit on the, the glue popped off, but that's fine, it's still perfectly good to read, um, oh, that's a nice and, nice and floppy, actually, um, I've seen this one also on a lot of people's TBRs and a lot of, um, what they have read and recommend, and I hope that this one's really good, too, I am really looking forward to it, because, I like, it looks like medieval, uh, medieval fiction. So yeah, it's a story that has Franciscan monks in it, but a, a fictional story. And I think there's a murder involved, if, if I'm remembering correctly. But anyway, I, I'm really excited to, to try this out as well. And I don't know where I'd seen this before, but as soon as I saw it, 
I was like, I need to get this one. Because I know I've seen it somewhere on a list. And it's Sarah Perry's The Essex Serpent. And I hope that this one's also really good. Like, you know, another English sort of, uh, well, maybe not English. That was more of a medieval setting. Um, this one is set in 1893. And Cora Seaborn departs for coastal ex Essex. Once she's there, she hears rumors that after nearly 300 years, the mythical Essex serpent, a fearsome creature that once roamed the marshes, has returned. She's eager to investigate, and Cora is introduced to parish vicar William Ransom. As they attempt to discover the truth, these seeming opposites find themselves inexorably drawn together. As their pursuit becomes more urgent, Cora's London past follows her to the coast with striking consequences. So it looks, it sounds like fun. It sounds like a good time. And I'm, I'm very interested in reading this one as well. And it's so cool. I mean, I'm going to try, I'm going to get the sticker off. They usually make these, um, at least at my local half price books, so that, yeah, it just peels right off. And it's, just look at that cover. Isn't that the most colorful, beautiful cover you've seen in a while? There's so much going on. But it's not too much, you know? It's just perfect. So pretty. So yeah, I was excited to, to see that there. And it was only uh, $8.49, so $8.50. Good deals. So anyway, uh, that's what happens when I have a little too much to drink and then I go book shopping. I end up buying how many? Like six books here? Yeah, six books. Um, and adding them onto my already too full TBR. So yeah. Life problems. First world problems, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, I think that that's about it. Oh, my tea sounds really good right now. Mm. Mm. My throat is so sore. Oh my gosh. The tea feels so good going down. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, so that's it for this video. I thank you guys for sticking around. I hope that your reading adventures are just as full of exciting, wonderful books as mine is, and I cannot wait to get to this stuff. There's not enough time. There's never enough time. If you like this video, I am very interested right now in trying to grow my community a little bit. Uh, I have 40 subscribers. Thank you guys so much to those of you who subscribed. It means the world to me, really. I am never going to monetize this channel. I'm never going to sell anything on this channel. I don't need to do that. I have a real-time job as well. So that's, that's where my money comes from. I'm very happy with it too. So anyway, um, if you guys enjoy this content, please give it a like. Please share it with your friends. I want to see some more people uh, come and talk to me about books. What books are you reading? I'd love to know. So until next time, thank you guys so much, and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.